get up out of here. Oh man, I love those quick little blasts, man. Those, those quick little blasts is what make bikes this size so fun. I love it, man. I love it. So let's see if we can make this U-turn look good. So remember kids, always look into the turn when you go. That simple. And then you power up. Woo. What's going on people? 602 Booster back at it again with another video. Oh, what's up Squid Bro? Love them out here, man. Love these squids out here. So the thing about these shootouts is that they'll take a specific type of bike. So let's say they'll take a bunch of leader bikes, you know, from the big four Japanese bikes and a few, you know, European bikes. And they'll get a panel of bikers and they'll, you know, rate which one they think is the best. Oh, this one scored a 10 in handling. Oh, this bike scored, you know, the best in horsepower because, you know, it's got this, or it's got the best, this is the best bike because of all the torques. So it's one of those kind of videos. And the bad thing is, is that when I first started riding bikes, I always used to watch those videos because you always have that question, which bike should I get? When you're in the market for a bike, that's the question you gotta answer is, what bike should I get? And of course, you look on YouTube because it's the easiest place. You know, you go to YouTube, you ask, you know, you ask, you, you know, people that ride, you know, what's the best bike for me? You know, what should I get? And I was looking at those videos and I was looking for this particular bike. And to be honest, those types of videos are very good for, you know, the certain type of person if they want to find out what someone else thinks is the best. But if you're trying to answer the question, what's the best bike for you? Those are the worst worst videos that you can watch to answer that question to find out if a certain bike is right for you let me tell you why number one the main problem with those videos is that you're pretty much looking at the same bike with just a different look and feel that's pretty much it you get guys out there that want to get like a commuter bike you know they want a bike that's more upright maybe naked you know good ergonomics you know they want to have a little bit of power to get them through the street and a little bit of power for the freeway so they're not like you know wobbling in such at high speed for example i was looking at naked bikes about this size like a gsx 1000 you know z1 z900 mt10 you know all the big four you know you all know what i'm talking about i was looking at all those the thing about it is that all those bikes on paper they're very similar you know what i'm saying they all are going to have similar features they're all going to perform very similar you are going to find very big differences between these bikes as far as just getting on them and riding them of course some of them have rider aids that the other bikes don't that's true they may feature different technical specs as far as that's concerned but overall the overall ride you know when you just have to get on the bike and ride it and you forget about the little stuff it's still the same bike and what happens is, is that people get so wrapped up in, oh yeah, I bought this bike because so-and-so said that it's got more horsepower. So yeah, that's why I bought that bike because it has more horsepower. That's honestly, I mean, that's the most stupidest reason to go and buy a bike based off of someone else's opinion. You gotta go see that bike for yourself. That's why I really have a hard time watching these videos is because the people that are riding these bikes They've got experience riding bikes for months, years on end. They ride different kind of bikes. And you're talking to an audience much different than the people that are watching the videos. You know, nine out of 10. So real talk, these videos are good for, you know, some folks, but they're not good for answering that question, like I said, because someone looking to buy a new bike or someone looking to buy their first bike, you know, it's like you're splitting hairs. I mean, if you're just gonna take the numbers and make the numbers like you know how much horsepower how much torque you know 
if you're gonna let those factors decide you know what bike you're gonna buy before you even go and sit on it before you even test it out for sure then uh you know <laughs> more power to you i wish i could do that man i wish i wish i was the kind of person to go on youtube find a video of someone that i don't even know talk about a bike and tell me that that bike is good for me same thing too actually i made a video a while back talking about why you should not get a high booster for your first bike you know i mean it, it, it's so easy to tell somebody to get a bike if you love the bike so much and you want everybody to be on your the same bike that you're on but to tell you the truth it's not for everybody and before i tell somebody to go and buy a bike i don't try to consider it myself you know what i'm saying you gotta put the, you gotta put your audience into the picture. You know what I'm saying? You gotta picture, okay, who am I talking to? Am I talking to somebody that is a beginner? Am I talking to somebody that's experienced? You know? So that's how I go around recommending bikes. But I mean, ultimately, it's all my opinion. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. All these videos of people telling you what bike is the best bike to buy, or this is a good beginner bike to buy. You know what I mean? they're basing it on one of two things if they're telling you to start on a smaller bike they're probably worried about your safety if people are telling you to start on a bigger bike but just respect it they're probably just worried about how you're going to look in the next few months man i wanted to split this so bad <sighs> but i can't but yeah man i mean really it's I'm not trying to bash on these videos, don't get me wrong. I mean, anybody that's a rider wants to try to help other riders. That's kind of the community that we're in. But the problem is, is that when you take videos like that, or when you take advice like that, you got to make sure you take it with a grain of salt, you know? Consider where that person's coming from, consider their riding experience, and see if it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? If a person is out there telling you that, yeah, you should buy this bike because it has more horsepower than another bike. And that's all they gotta say? That should tell you a lot. <laughs> right there. And if it doesn't, maybe you need to rethink if you should ride. Real talk. There is a lot of traffic out here today. But yeah, man, it's, uh, it's all subjective. It, it, it really, really is. Each person is different. Each person is buying a bike to fill a certain need. So my point is is don't just take the numbers and run with the numbers thinking that this is going to be the best bike for you it may very well be but the point is is don't just take that bike with all the shiny horsepower and all the torques and let that be the only reason you get the bike because then you're going to be just you're going to be just like everybody else you're going to be arguing with people on youtube on instagram facebook talking about yeah i bought this bike because it has more horsepower it has like three more horsepower than the other bike you know what i'm saying it just it just makes no sense every time somebody comes up and tells me hey man why'd you buy a busa you know you could have got an h2 and it had a lot more horsepower it's like man well yeah i know <laughs> it's got plenty of horsepower i get that but that's not what i'm looking for you know what i'm saying it's just like, come on, man, what kind of argument is that? I just try to, you know, keep my distance from people like that. Because there really isn't an intelligent conversation you can have with them. All they're going to talk about is the numbers, and that's all people have to go on. Why don't we talk about the bike's feel? Like, how do you feel when you ride it? I mean, it's, it's so hard to describe how a person feels on a bike as opposed to talking about how much horsepower and torque and what bike beats what because it's got more this and more that. But anyway guys, that's pretty much all I gotta say about it because I'm gonna start rambling. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, do you like to watch videos like that, those shootout videos? If so, let me know. If you wanna see a shootout video come from your boy, let me know. 602 out.